What's up, everybody? Welcome to IGN Game Scoop, the first IGN Game Scoop of 2018. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. Joining me this week is Justin Davis, Scoop. Ryan McCaffrey, and Dan Stapleton. Yes. And we've got a great show for you this week. We're going to talk about what are we going to talk about? We've got a strange question about the Nintendo Switch that oh, needs boy. answered. Okay. We're going to oh, hear you from. Can't put it in there. Don't we're gonna, try. We're going to. Or maybe you can you. <laughs> we're going to hear from a 16 year old person who has just started playing video games. Oh, it's so exciting. And is getting his education from this Envious. very show. But first, I don't want to hear another gosh darn oh. word. Hey. About Breath of the Wild, Family Show, Mario Odyssey, Persona 5, Horizon, Cuphead. It's old news. <laughs> They're old games, new year, new games. We're going to talk about all new games uh, okay. from now on. We're going to have a good old-fashioned game burning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I've, I've taken the liberty of laying out uh, the release calendar for all the big games we know of so far coming this year. Of course, it only gets us through March. Literally, I don't think we have a single release date after April 13th. Game developers don't like to put dates on there. Marvel will tell you, hey, we got a movie coming out in 2021. Yeah, but it has a release date. It's June 19th in 2021. We're going to change it three times, yeah. but well, that's what the date is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, they, they, they play uh, game publishers play their release dates a little bit uh, closer to the vest. I don't know if I've gotten that. Because uh, video games are hard to make. <laughs> that's true. It's good. Not like Very movies. Difficult. Movies. Easy peasy. Easy, <laughs> easy peasy. <laughs> Uh, Fix it in post. It's yeah, fine. That's true. You can tell him I said that. Here we go. This is uh, this is the g big game releases with release dates that we know of so far in 2018. We're gonna kick things off with Street Fighter V Arcade Edition on January 16th. Is this one coming to Xbox? Uh, or is it still PS4 only? I mean, I, Flash oh, PC. Yeah. No one. Knows. I don't. I, I don't up, believe so. I didn't no, look up the exact. I'm, I'm being dumb. Uh, <laughs> I, I assume people, some people are excited for this game out there. It includes it's what the first season or two of. I mean, it's just all stuff. It's like the Capcom thing, where like they had Street Fighter Five, then added to it and add DLC, yeah. and now it's like their second chance. But do we know why it's the arcade edition? It's just the edition. It, it just, okay, <laughs> gotta call got it, it something. All right, yeah. that's true. You ha you gotta call it something. I actually don't know it's anything. A, about it. That's <laughs> what it says actually underneath the title of the game. Well, <laughs> gotta call it something. It's just a, you know one of the most classic Shigeru Miyamoto quotes. You yeah. gotta call it something. It's inspirational. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Shigeru Miyamoto, on January 19th, Kirby Battle Royale comes to 3DS. Which so, 100 is player, another, I assume you know, another bunch PUBG, of Kirby's. Yeah, yeah taking last, the PUBG formula with Kirby, which could be interesting. Kirby standing. You could just <laughs> suck up the other players and yeah, it's not uh, a terrible idea. gain their abilities. Yeah, that could be okay. You can have that one for free. The man. marketing tagline who sucks the most? <sighs> That's good. That's really good. Uh, Damon, the rest of the show's canceled. We're now <laughs> brainstorming Kirby Battle Royale. <laughs> Uh, it's, yeah, winner, winner, sucker, you yes. fill in the rest. I actually have been, I uh, rediscovered my 3DS a little bit because I've been playing, I talked about it on the show, I've been playing Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing Relief. Yeah. Um, it's a really wonderful handheld and I spent a lot of time with it, but I'm, I'm you know, like, it, it's odd. It's just very odd and strange to see a new 3DS game coming out in oh, 2018. It's, it's not the only one, Jesse. To me, that console's moment has passed and I, I don't know. They're, they're um, they're Nintendo just, did not get the memo. Yeah, there are just like tens of millions of them out there that, that you know, people are still buying games for. Yeah, yeah. I understand and they, I'm sure they sold, if we haven't already, we'll probably get stats soon on how many were sold over Christmas and there's new, many new 2DSs and 3DSs being opened but um, goodness gracious, like put your weight behind the switch. Yeah, I think Kirby Battle Royale is actually already out in Europe mm -hmm. uh, and IGN Japan gave it a 7.4. Please Good. be excited. Uh, <laughs> on January 23rd, we get a couple games. A couple uh, uh, games for JR... No, just one game for JRPG yeah. fans. Lost Sphere. This is from the I Am Setsuna team. What's to, what Tokyo S RPG? P-H-E-A-R. Lost Sphere, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they could tell that's how it was spelled by my pronunciation. <laughs> that's, for PS, that's for PS4, PC, and Switch. That also has been reviewed by IGN Japan. They're ahead of the curve, Dan. Nailing it. They're they should just do everything. Future time zone. There, yeah, it's a time zone thing. <laughs> what did like, they give? Uh, what did they give Spider Man on PS4? <laughs> a three point two, I think. IGN <laughs> Japan gave Lost Sphere a seven point three. It's good. Good. That's uh, another JRPG. Not quite game. as good as the Kirby game. Yep. Yeah. Not quite as good as Kirby <laughs> Battle Royale. Uh, that same day is the Inpatient, which is the PSVR game from Supermassive, which is the developer of Until Dawn. And it's in the it's in the Until Dawn universe, right? That's the cinematic true? universe. Yeah, there I was a trailer for it at E3. It's remember. a prequel where you're in the yeah. asylum. You're it's a it's a good idea. It's a good premise for a VR game where you're yeah. uh, uh, locked in a mental institution against your will and have to kind of try to figure out what's yeah. going on. That's like uh, Wilson's Heart for Oculus last oh, year. Same know. premise. Oh, wow. It's mm -hmm. a black and white game, very Alfred Hitchcocky, and I missed that one. 
curious to check this one out. Uh, and then on January 26th, get two big games. Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, I've never watched Dragon Ball, but even I, Justin, will tell you this game looks very cool. Yeah, it looks incredible. It looks like if you freeze frame a moment of that game, it looks like a freeze frame from the anime. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. And I think, uh, I don't know, it seems like fighting games have kind of had to come back in the past couple years. Last year was a big, a big fighting game year. Yeah, totally. uh, and uh, I think people are particularly excited for this game. Well, they've secretly I list, been... I would list last year's fighting games, but you specifically told me not to. Yeah. I said, Dan... That's true. Listen. That's true. <laughs> Only 2018 games. That's true. <laughs> um, you know, not a big Dragon Ball guy, not a big fighting game guy, but they've secretly been, you know, Bandai Namco. They had Budokai and Budokai 2, and they've just been, you know, year after year, they've yeah. been uh, uh, just massive hits. They're, they're these games that sort of quietly rack up many millions in sales, and now this one seems to have broken through to even a little bit wider audience. Yeah, especially there was uh, at least one fighting game release last year that there was kind of a backlash against, and maybe people are rallying around Dragon Ball Fighters instead. Uh, that same day is a game I am very excited for, Monster Hunter World. Mm -hmm. uh, even though uh, I did not play the beta, I, I, you know, that kind of stuff, like I can wait for the game. Yeah, I can wait. We for have a plenty to play right now. Incredible amount of coverage up on sure. this game from Casey DeFridis and uh, Joe Scrubbles. Yeah, are the two biggest fans on it. They've both been to the to Capcom in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, they've played a ton of the game. Yeah, we've got a lot. And our judging from the, the view counts on the yeah. our audience loves Monster Hunter yeah, World. Like sure. a big game. Yeah, I yeah. I hope people aren't sleeping on that one. Or if they are, wake up. Well I mean I, I have been sleeping on Monster Hunter in general, but this one I'm I'm woken up for it. Well, that's what I was gonna you're say. Like now. I'm woke I think that's what that means. When you're woke you're excited for a Monster Hunter world. I think that's how the, the people yeah, use that so, word. Sounds about right. I've uh, never played the franchise. I've admired it from afar, and it's interesting. Um, Capcom's kind of doing their thing and iterating on it, you know, year after year with sort of updates, and then it does get a sequel, and the sequel gets an update. And I've never known, like, is this the one? Is this the is place for me to, like, figure out what, what Monster Hunter is all about? So I think World is, like, a nice... It looks to me like a nice jumping on point. Well, Capcom with a big Q1, huh? Between Street Fighter Arcade and, that's and true. this. Yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, also, Mega Man is in the game. Oh, you can put Mega Man in your Monster Hunter world. Is he a monster? You kill him and, no, and he's harvest like, his parts. You have like a little cat person helper, <laughs> and then you can sort of reskin that thing to be a Mega Mega Man. Well, why not? That's true. That's the bullet point on the back of the well. box. <laughs> hey, and also Mega Man because why not? Uh, finally, in January, January thirtieth, Dissidia Final Fantasy NT comes to PS4, and that's the Final Fantasy fighting game. Other was fighting a game. PSP game. PSP game. Yeah. Years, with right? uh yeah, with a dedicated uh fan base fan base. And then I think this uh is all based on the arcade version. Yeah, obviously very from Japan. and yeah. you know, next gen looking. Cool. Looks very pretty. Looks chaotic. I can't figure out. There's a lot going it's one of those games. There's just a lot on the in the HUD. Like it's a crowded, crowded game screen. Maybe you can turn some of that stuff off. Uh getting into February. February sixth is the Shadow of the Colossus remake. Mm -hmm. Which I'm very. Excited I'm really for. excited to play this because yeah. uh, I did not play the original mm. on PS2. I'm one of those people who this you this do. I am who this remake is for. Yes, and I, well, I've heard the legend. The yeah, <laughs> did, so you know, hopefully it'll fix the widely uh, held criticism of the original, the, the bad controls and the sort yeah. of you know technical uh, roughness. Right. So yeah, I'm very very eager to get into this. Play it on a PS4 Pro. If that, if that yeah. can't straighten it out, nothing. Yeah. Else. Well. Um, we should clarify that they did uh, an HD remake of the original on PS3. Yes. And that was taking the original game, you know, and just giving it sort of the HD remake treatment. And this is sort of a proper, this is like an actual new. Like it's a, a remake. remake. Yeah. yeah it's exactly. a remake. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Versus sort of the uh, update. And so they've, you know, Sony's gotten a little bit of heat for like, oh, they keep trying to sell us this game. And I'm like, well, you know, each decision made sense at the time that Sony made the decision. You know, everyone wanted. PS2 games on their PS3 and updated versions of them, so I think it's completely fine. Also, yeah. a remake actually gives you the chance to substantially change the controls without without being like, well, why'd you change this? It's just a remaster. Yeah. No, I, and I haven't played Shadow of the Colossus since it was originally released, so uh, playing it this way will probably uh, be more in line with how I remember playing yeah. the original rather than trying to revisit the original today, actually. Uh, Dan, how excited are you for February 8th? First big uh, I, believe, PC. I believe that's Civilization Rise and Civilization Fall. Civilization Six, the yeah. Rise and Fall expansion. I am fairly excited. I, I actually was I fired up okay. Civ Six for for uh, just to just to refresh my memory as to as to what that game is like pre expansion, so yep. I can play the expansion <laughs> and and and, uh, and you know appreciate the differences. Uh, and like it's it's a really good game. Still very yeah. good, still very interesting. And like you, know, you hear a bunch of people bag on on Civ games for for having bad AI, and that's true. Uh, it's not. It's not. 
I wouldn't say bad is necessarily the right word, but but it doesn't understand combat as well as it should. Um, mm. It's a very complex combat system in these in these last two games, uh, and the AI has never really wrapped its head around that. Um, but it still puts up enough of a fight that that if you aren't like a super expert player, like those games are very challenging on the high levels. So I'm I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know what Fraxis always does is comes in and adds just a bunch of stuff around their their core systems. And in Civilization VI, um, they they made a point of like putting in as much as they could that so people wouldn't say say like, well, look at this next to Civilization V. It doesn't have espionage or religion or whatever. So they put all those systems in uh, to begin with. So now they're they're doing some other stuff they haven't done before. Are you going to review Rise and Fall? Uh, I hope so if I have time. <laughs> Well. That, that's Sid Meier. I think he might have a future in this business. <laughs> Something you know, the kid's got yeah. some, got some, got well, some. Talent. Sid Meier actually hasn't hasn't designed a Civilization game since the original. Each each of the subsequent games and their expansions have had different designers. Much cool. respect for Fraxis for I mean, how many strategy franchises? You know, they're making sort of the same game. I mean, that's doing Civ a disservice, but they managed <laughs> to keep evolving it and keep giving people. You yeah. know, six is a big enough improvement over five, over four that. Uh, it's still just as compelling and addictive today as it was in the in. Well, they've yeah, al- they've almost got a they've almost got a Bethesda thing going on mm-hmm. where it's like it's you know, XCOM and, uh, yeah. and 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 Civ and then you know Bethesda's got Elder Scrolls and Fallout. It's like you know they're two sides of the except, same coin. Except that's that's the same team, whereas Fraxis has two different teams devoted to, to both those. Right, true. Uh, but it's it's less that that uh, that it's an improvement over the previous game and more just a different take. It's and that's why I think having a different designer on each one is a big strength. Yep, because. Uh, you take you take the same idea. It's like you, you say, okay, make a grid based game about about uh, you know turn based strategy game about taking a, a uh, people from a nomadic tribe to to a you know world dominating civilization, and seeing the, the different ways people approach it, uh, you know, th- there's a lot of similarities, but a lot of differences too. Uh, I could go for another Civ Rev. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, Civ Rev Two was not the strongest. I like the first one though. I feel like well, they could come back to it. They, they but actually, I will say that you now have full-blown Civ on your iPad. Right. So it defeats well, a little bit of the purpose true. of Civ. That is true. That is true. Uh, February 9th, Dragon Quest Builders comes to Switch. And I will play it. It's already out on other platforms. And what? I mean, I assume it's uh, Minecraft in the Dragon Quest universe. Sort of. I mean, it's half and half, right? Like half RPG, half Minecraft, you know, block builder. And yeah. that's a Justin game if I've ever seen one and just didn't <laughs> get around to it. And now that it's on Switch, it's like yeah. now, now is that's game... Now it's my chance. I think that up. game reviewed well, too. I think we gave it, it yeah. an eight-something. <clears throat> I believe so, yeah. Uh, and then uh, February 13th, Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology comes to 3DS. Mm, and sure. this is a remake of a DS game. That we gave an 8.5 <laughs> several years ago. Why are they remaking a game for 3DS now? Dan? Well, it's got the perfect chronology now. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay, all right. That, yeah. that is a fair point. No, we don't know, but they are still making 3DS games. Uh... On February 15th, Dynasty Warriors 9 comes out. And I, I don't know if you guys are aware. Those games are incredibly popular. Well, I'm, I'm actually surprised it's only 9 because I yeah. th- they come out very quietly at least once a year. And I'm, I'm almost yeah. surprised it's not a higher number than 9 right They've now. They pulled a little bit of a Call of Duty. I don't know that's a crazy apt comparison. But they did like Shogun Warriors 1, 2, and 3. Right. And like they've sort of branched off in these yeah. different it's, directions. It's its own genre of Mosu. Right. Thought. So, yeah, so now they're, they're just a, b- a bajillion different different offshoots of it. This is uh, the first one that's open world. And what my, my question is, why did they not spell it like D number 9 Misty Warrior. D9 Misty? Dan, this is why we can't have nice things. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan of it. <laughs> D9 is Sea Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dan, what big PC game comes out the same day as Dynasty Warriors 9? Oh. February 15th. It's been a long time coming. It's a Kickstarter game. Your, I just cheated. No, it's fine. Your your realistic medieval game. Oh, oh, it's uh, um, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Right. Uh, or Deliverance Kingdom Come. I always forget. I think it's Kingdom, I think it's Kingdom, Kingdom Come Deliverance. Okay, yeah. yeah. That, that's not just a PC game. That's also out on consoles. Oh really? It is. Wow, I yeah. was not. I was not aware. It's coming to consoles at um, the same time. Well, <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, it is, that game's had awesome. a lot of interest on IGN uh, over yeah. the, the few years we've been covering it as well. It is a. It is a fascinating game. Like it, it's. It's like Skyrim, but in the real world. Yeah. So it's. It's like as historically accurate as they can make it. They modeled the topography of the area that it's set in with the actual ravines and hills. And I forgot, I forgot exactly which country it is, but it's like Eastern European. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But you know it's it's uh, 
you know, you're you're a character who who is living in this village, and this this uh, lord comes along and kill you know, wipes out your village, kills yeah. your family, and you're off on on your quest for revenge. But you're actually uh, in the middle of this historically accurate war uh, that's going on, and so it's got it's got very uh, you know fidgety. Not a fidgety. Fidgety is the wrong word. Fidgety is negative. It's got <laughs> it's got uh, a very flexible uh, combat system. So unlike Skyrim, where you're just running up and you know yeah. whack whack whack, yeah, uh, and you know, heavy attack. Or thus you know, Right. <laughs> uh, it's got, you know, a bunch of different stances, like you, you know, you're blocking in different corners and that kind of stuff. So it's a much more involved combat system for melee. than The, uh, yeah. the, the developers came in last month. Sorry, Damon, I'm going to talk yeah. a little 2017 for a second. They came, okay. We've got some it's very okay. recent coverage <laughs> on like, It's about a game coming out in 2018. Yeah. Uh, Tom Marks, our, I'll allow it. our newish PC editor. Yeah, so we've got some new gameplay video, new impressions, mm -hmm. uh, for re re recent rather, on IGN, mm -hmm. if you search those out. I think, uh, I mean, Dan touched on it, but what, uh, why this game is on my radar is, you know, we'll see the finished product. Could be great, could be not so great, but the reason I'm excited for it is they seem to have an answer for every time someone's like, well, what about the questing system? They're like, here's how it works, and you're like, that sounds great. And they're like, <laughs> what about the combat? And it's like, well, we thought about problem A, B, C and solved it with solution one, two, three. Mm. That sounds great. Like, every single thing they go down, it sounds like they put you know, care and thoughtfulness into it and that, uh, you know, a, a giant game like that from a new unproven team yeah, could go that's, wrong that's in any right. number of ways, but um, it's definitely earned a place on my most anticipated list thanks to just the, the, the volume and openness of their communication and, and um, uh, they're just very open about, yeah. about all the game systems and how it's going to work. The and fact that they, they seem to have thought everything through, it still remains to be seen whether, whether all those pieces <laughs> mesh together, right. Sure, but at, on paper it sounds great. Yeah. Well, I had no idea it was coming to consoles uh, that same date. I don't know if it's day and date, but I know. I mean, I know it's okay. announced for every okay. platform. Um, well, much. another game that is coming to consoles that day is Owlboy. Mm -hmm. Have you played that one yet? Yeah, I thought it was overrated. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, it's coming to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One that same day. For anyone who's excited. It's uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's handcrafted 2D. It's not quite accurate to call it Metroidvania because it's a little bit more linear, but... What's striking about it is it's just thousands and thousands of screens of 2D pixel art that are all handmade and unique yeah. and different, and um, it feels almost unbelievable. It's like, how did you make this? Um, I found the gameplay to be a little bit more conventional. It didn't quite match the highs of the art, but uh, it's still worth playing, but I didn't, you know, to me it wasn't amazing, amazing. It's, it, it is another game that's a fantastic fit for the Switch. I'll give it that. Yeah. Uh, and finally, that same day is the Secret of Mana 3D remake. It's coming out that day. And that one's for what? Switch, PS4, uh, and Vita. No, sorry. PC, PS4, and Vita. Not coming to Switch, at least not that day. Womp womp. Uh, yeah, I don't know. That game looks cool, but it just came out on, the original just came out on the SNES Classic. And, uh, That's right. I don't know. It kind of remains to be seen whether we need to play that in 3D. Don't really know about that. I, I played it back in the day. I'm interested to, to see what they've done with it. Yeah, I am too. I generally don't like the Square Enix, uh, like the chibi 3D polygonal remakes of like you know Final Fantasy three and a lot of yeah. those games. Um, that style, um, I've not been as into. Yeah, no, I I, I prefer the pixel art original yep. as well. Uh, but what is coming to Switch the following day, February sixteenth, is Bayonetta one and two. Ooh boy! Just revealed last month, so. Uh, February twentieth. I'll be interested to see how this game shakes out. Metal Gear Survive. <laughs> it's the first Metal Gear, first post Kojima Metal Gear, and it's coming into a world where uh, there's a lot of uh, I don't know gamers are just not crazy about Konami these days. So we'll see. It's a survival game, co-op uh, mm -hmm. focus. I think it is single player as well, but like sort of a co-op co-op oriented survival game. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know what's like the closest analog maybe. Um, I mean, it's probably Fortnite in the in yeah, but without the building. Without building. Um, but we've seen, you know, it's interesting to see sort of the influence of Minecraft split off into these like you know building games, block heavy building games, and then survival games like I don't know, like the Forest on PC or like Ark, Rust or, 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 yeah, Rust. And this is um, you know a really high profile, big brand sort of tackling the survival genre. I, look, I wouldn't be surprised to see that game go either way. Like we review it, it's a four. It's oh. terrible. It's it's gonna have to be good because it, it, it's it's, it's got, some got an uphill battle it's yeah. going right in right into a major headwind of you know gamers I think they they don't they want to hate this game because it's not you know Kojima and the exactly and the right. and the Kojima split from Konami was very ugly and yeah uh, the, yeah they've they've got a, Konami's got a challenge here 
in yeah. in the back of my head, I've been I've been flagging this game from the beginning as one that might be like I wouldn't be surprised if that game surprised people and you know turned out to be like the logline of many reviews might be like oh it's actually pretty darn good you know yeah. um, but you're right like everyone's so ready to hate on it and it is a forty dollar game which is sort of like well why <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know um, you know survival game set in the Metal Gear world like forget its history like that's a neat concept so. I'm yeah. going into it with an open mind. Yeah. Uh, the conditions are right for a uh, for the uh, critic score and the user score to be different <laughs> <laughs> on this game. Oh, I mean, that, that's the thing about like Metacritic <laughs> user scores is like yeah. there's no way to tell if those people have ever touched that game. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, two more uh, ports coming to Switch in February. On the 22nd is Pac-Man Championship Edition Two Plus, and then on the 27th is Payday Two. Mm. Uh, you know what the plus is? Well, I don't know. So, Pac-Man Championship Edition Two yeah. came out two, two years, years ago yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what the extra content is in Plus, but Payday is also Payday Two is also a few years old. Yeah, the whole fun of it's the, the multiplayer co-op. I hope it has online on Switch. Yeah, well, I mean, I assume that's kind of the whole <coughs> point, right? Uh, we just need to find an audience. So, getting into March on March 13th, Devil May Cry HD Collection comes to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. I feel like that's been released before, and now it's just coming to current consoles, maybe. More hd or Yeah, more, more hd -er than ever. Uh, and then uh, Ryan Gollum comes out that day. To yes. Uh, we, uh, this might be the record holder for the earliest IGN first we've ever, as far as from, from, when yeah, it from, when it, from the IGN first to the release date. Yeah. It's going to be like two years exactly. This was our IGN first in March of 2015. No, yeah. 20, sorry, 2016, March of 2016. Yeah. What year is it? <laughs> I know, it's it's hard right now, uh, but yeah, this is this is the, what's notable about this game is that it's a bunch of a small group, but it's it's all ex uh, Bungie and some ex three four three people. Jamie Greesmer is the the lead designer on it. Uh, he is basically the he was the lead designer on Halo, the the sort of the one that's credited with the thirty seconds of fun mm. combat loop in Halo. Uh, and getting the controls to feel good on a on a first person shooter, which doesn't matter in a VR game. Yeah. But uh, yeah, and then Marty O'Donnell is the other studio co-founder. Is you know, in my opinion, the <laughs> single, the greatest uh, composer we have in the video game industry. Ooh, I'm fighting words. Um, I'm sure. But yeah, the, uh, the the game looks interesting. It appears to be one of the most sort of fully formed games that's that's come to VR yet, rather than just like a little bite sized experience. Uh, you're you're a little girl who I, it's, it can sort of you end up in uh, assuming control of these giant golem monsters with sword swinging you know one to one and with your with your PlayStation Move controller and uh, yeah I'm really curious to see how it turns out because what I saw was you know very early but very promising as well yeah, yeah. Uh, well Ryan also on March 20th we get the first Xbox One release of the year well for not, the, not the first release but the first big high profile first first microsoft. first party yeah first party release, game yeah. which is sea of thieves yeah i mean it's this is microsoft's biggest new ip in years i mean there's it's rare it is and it's like, rare's <laughs> comeback really from it's both rare and rare the, the connect yeah. yeah from the connect sports stuff uh I, I you know everybody here that's played it in in you know the yes the sort of shorter controlled bursts has had an amazing time with it uh uh, there's been the alpha going on, which is technically under NDA, so you get to play a little, you know, kind of in longer stretches. But we're all really jazzed for this. Every all of us that have played it, and the the big question is, will there, you know, will it keep you hooked for more than those short bursts of time? But yeah. the, the the ingredients are all there. It's just a matter of whether there's enough to flush it out, and I I can't wait to see more of it. Yeah. And then that same day is Yakuza Six, the Song of Life. Oh boy. Best song ever. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's hard to hard to argue with life. Uh, but yeah, the Yakuza just is another uh, franchise that has a very uh, loyal and dedicated fan base, like like Max Coville. Well, but it's funny <laughs> to see it. It's funny to see it swing back around. I mean, no one. I, I mean, maybe I'm I'm projecting a little bit, but I don't seem to remember anyone making a stink or caring about Yakuza three and four. Didn't but, Zero just come out recently? Well, like yeah. that was like, last year, maybe. Yeah, Sega's yeah. really there was the remake of one. 
and zero and now six. And uh, uh, in my sense, at least on my like social feed and anecdotally, maybe yeah. you're right. Maybe it is all max. <laughs> but I feel like I'm hearing more and more people talk about like it's sort of starting to punch above its weight a little bit after after really like I think some of the games maybe didn't even come out in the West. Can we, can we talk about their ability to count with those games? One, zero, six. Really? Well, anyway. You know, it's fine. You know, you get the prequel. <laughs> You got to call it something. They do have to call it something. Uh, on March 22nd, Valkyria Chronicles 4 is out. And I, somehow I don't even realize how we got to four of those games. Yeah, I know. Love, I love the original. I mean, but yeah, it's, I guess three came out a couple years ago, right? Wait, so there was one on the PS2, or, you know, Sony, the big PS3. PS3, excuse me. Yeah. yeah, Sony Home Console. Then there was one on 3DS or DS, you know. A true? Know. Yeah, there was a like, mobile, there was like, a handheld one. But like a sequel? I or think so. Spin-off? And then there's one. I'm and then I'm missing one. If this is four, this is four. It's coming out. So th- there March. was there was. I'm gonna look it up. Valkyria Revolution, which came out last year, the year that shall not be named. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but that was that was a different style of game. Yeah. Uh, I keep getting told that I should play Valkyria Chronicles because it's very XCOM like. I just I'd just never gotten around to it. So maybe this one, if uh, yeah. if it holds up to uh, I mean, the standards that people people keep talking up the the other ones too, I should uh, I should give it a shot. The uh, yeah, those games are cool. The the I don't know the Japanese ness of them may test your patience, but <laughs> I I'd, I'd be that. interested to see what you think. March twenty third, two high profile games: A Way Out, mm-hmm. uh, revealed at E three last year, an EA game, all co op all the time. Yes, prison escape game, but uh, it has a cool like game sharing feature where you can play with someone else and they don't have right. to buy a copy, right? Right. Yeah, very yeah. excited about that game. I haven't seen that since like Starcraft. Yeah, it's well. Yeah, it's been a while. Got an answer on Valkyrie. All right, Chronicles. report. Justin is reporting back from the field. Justin, Ugh. what are you? What are you? What are you hearing about Valkyria Chronicles? Uh, my extensive research has uncovered uh-huh. that two and three were PSP games. Two and three were what? Were P- well, what? What came out like two years ago? Then there was a spinoff. Okay, Valkyria Chronicles D. Okay. Oh, all right. Uh, mystery solved. And the same day as a way out is Nino Kuni two. Which was supposed to come out this month, but ended yeah, up getting delayed, delayed a couple uh, months. Yeah, got delayed like three times. Yeah, that's true. Ab- we, what an absolutely gorgeous JRPG. The yeah. first one was like a yeah, very highly regarded about what eighty hour yeah. role playing uh-huh. game. It was just you know big, lots to do, plenty, yeah. to, plenty to enjoy. Yeah, can they just get us that review copy now? So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have plenty of time. We might be able to finish it by the time of release. Uh, rounding out March on March twenty seventh is Far Cry Five, which also got delayed. I guess so only, yeah. only about a month, month it was supposed to be out in February. I'm a big Far Cry fan. Uh, I've loved every Far Cry since 3, so I hope this one turns out okay. The original was great, too. I just never played it, yeah. But I, I hear good things that, about one. The, the original came out like opposite like Half-Life 2 and, yeah. Yeah. and Doom 3, and it's like it came out of nowhere. I like, like the, holy crap. The first half of the original Far Cry right, better right. than the second half. Yeah, before they introduced the mutants. Yeah. Spoilers. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then MLB The Show 18 is out the same day. and uh, Year in and year out. It's great always baseball a baseball game. Yeah. It's, and it's, thank God, goodness, because it's the only one we have. The only sim we have. Uh, RBI yeah. Baseball, sorry, that you don't count. <laughs> yeah, that's true. that's true. And then, uh, like I, as I mentioned, the only uh, game release we know of so far in April, as of now, is We Happy Few, which is just going to be exiting game preview at that point, right? Yes. Yeah, but, but that game has not had, uh, has not had like its campaign story mode. Uh, so it's all been okay. it's all been kind of a, a dynamic uh, roguelike, roguelike. Yeah. Yeah, it's like thing. Roguelike. So it actually has a campaign that'll be there at That's at what launch. that's that what was shown off to to uh, very high acclaim at E3 it was last year or the year before 2 years ago, right? Yeah. It was it's very it's got a BioShock vibe to it. At least the campaign does. And in the absence of actual BioShock, we'll take it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's true. So those are the games that have release dates, but of course there will be other games released this year, and there's been. Oh, that uh, was it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty We're well. It a year. <laughs> you know, don't quote me on that, but I, I feel like other games will be released, and there's even been games that have been uh, stated to come sometime in 2018. When, when was RDR2 supposed to be? Well, I thought spring. It, yeah, spring. supposed okay, to be, yeah. or yeah. It's confirmed this year. I mean, confirmed in the oh. sense that they said, I know, but they, they did s- say spring. Yeah, and this is Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, Only for PS4 about. and Xbox One so far. Yes. Well, you know, t- t- typically with Rockstar, the PC version comes a year later. I'll get around to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There's that uh, Wild West Online MMO, and yeah. they came in here to show it off, and I checked it out. It's like it's, it, there's it's got some potential. Sure, the version I saw was extremely early, but you know they they did not hide from the RDR two question. They were like, yeah, there's we're trying to fill the void. We're you know we're trying to jump in here while yeah, Rockstar is is not having a PC version. Yeah. 
Well, unless unless Red Dead Redemption Two gets delayed to the fall, which it could, of course, could. it will be out. Uh, I would imagine probably May. I think the first game was a May release. Uh, yeah, it crushed Alan Wake. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> Poor Alan Wake. I love Alan Wake. <laughs> Me too. Uh, I could take another Alan Wake. Uh, so, of course, Red Dead Redemption 2 is expected. Ace Combat 7 is expected sometime this year. And that's another one of those games that just, you know, maybe we don't talk about it a lot here at IGN, but it has this very fervent uh, fan base. The I VR think. on that's really fun. Yeah. Super fun. And surprisingly not nauseating, in surprisingly my opinion. Surprisingly not nauseating. IGN.com. Cool. Yeah, and most most uh, cockpit-style games are... are, are more comfortable because you're you're you know you're sitting in a cockpit you expect to be in a thing that's moving without right. your legs moving yeah uh whereas if you're playing in first person like that that makes a lot of people yeah. uh more nauseous because they're like why are my legs working yeah that makes a lot of sense now what about anthem revealed last summer d3 you said we're talking about 2018 yeah. games <laughs> well, I, I, that's what i'm asking is that a 2018 game no goodness, okay. gra- no, goodness yeah. gracious no we may have said it was in our big games of 2018 uh, that's like, well that's because <laughs> ea did they yeah, they have yeah. said all of 2018 yeah. just, i don't believe you yeah okay. we just think they're lying okay <laughs> all right well if he i mean if ea says it I'm not lying just you know <laughs> optimistic <laughs> Uh, Dan, are you excited for The Bard's Tale 4? <coughs> Not really. I've okay. never played well, one of those games. All right. <laughs> it's a big PC game. I yeah. guess I just, maybe I'm, uh, yeah, I, I just I expect everything you. On You're supposed to like all PC games, Dan. Yeah, so just, wait, I'm, it's, I it's like. Th- this is another one a little bit like, well, we saw the Valkyria Chronicles thing, but I'm trying to figure out how they got to 4. So they did the remake uh, in, you know, where they, because The Bard's Tale was an old classic computer RPG. Early you know. 80s. Yeah, like back there with Wizardry, you know, and then eventually died away, and then they rebooted it as, uh, almost as a parody, like it was a comedy game, you know, making... For PS2, ac- original mm-hmm. Xbox, and PC. And then... Uh, it was very good. And then they kick-started one, so that's another franchise where I'm missing one, I guess, unless they're counting the original and just saying, F it. Bard's Tale 4. I need to follow up on that. Yeah. I did like the silly one. I thought it was It was good. Really- Which yeah, one yeah. was the silly one? The PS2 one, the one that was a comedy game. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I think I played it on, maybe I played it on Xbox, I'm not sure. Most of my experience with Bart's Tales from screenshots in computer gaming magazines from a long time ago. I don't think I've ever actually said Like uh, the original uh, Let's Plays, <laughs> just watch it in a magazine. Yeah. I think it was first. Blurry I think it was like streamed a, in a magazine. Yeah. I think it was like Might and Magic, like a first person, you know, move forward in, like, Correct. in a grid layout. Biomutant. I hope that game will be out this year. That game looks really cool. That game kind of surprised us last summer. Gamescom reveal. Yeah, yeah. came out of nowhere. Looked real good. Yeah, and there's no no real way of knowing how far along that is if they yeah. if they announced it uh, when it when it was like fully built and just needs needs tightening up before release. But I think if they if if so, they probably would have put a, a solid release date on it. Yeah, announcement. So I'd, a, I'd be I'd be kind of surprised to see it this year. It's a third person third mutant action game where you can customize your animal character. And it's uh, that's X. Avalanche, X Just Cause. Is that true? Developers, okay. yes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I wonder if Bloodstained Ritual of the Night will make it out this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, so. I, that didn't come out already? Nope. Oh, I yeah. played it at Judges I Week last year, and oh. I thought I did not like it at all. Oh, I thought well, it was wow. muy bad. Wow. That's too, well, that's sad. that's sad to hear because this is another one like, uh, like Mighty Number no. 9, where <coughs> it's the creator, or well, not the creator, but. Uh, uh, a key person in, in uh, Castlevania's development, especially Igarashi, right? Symphony well, I mean, of the Night. It, Konami won't make another Castlevania game, so he's like, I'm going to kickstart my own. And if it's still, I mean, if it's still not out yet, then hopefully it w- I will like it by the time it comes out yeah. if they're still working on it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I played it again, but it was like it's two or three E3s ago now at this point. So, yeah, it has been a long time coming. What about Code Vein? Uh, is that from software? Yeah. That's from software. It's not, I don't know if it's accurate to say it's like Dark Souls, but it's... Yeah, it's Vampire know, Dark Souls, from, from which is being very reductionist. You know, it's got its own systems and, and you know, unique elements yeah. to it. But it's the latest and that's sort of from's... I mean, I definitely appreciate and respect their, you know, they didn't... I mean, they did do Dark Souls 1 through and 2 and 3, but, you know, Bloodborne, Code Vein, like they're yeah. willing to take that formula and put some unique spins on it. Yeah. I'm glad that we're not just getting Dark Souls 6, in other words. Ryan. Yes. Crackdown 3. Crackdown three. When is that? When is that game coming out? I believe they had also said spring. Okay. So we'll see. I mean, it's uh, you know they're. they're I, I feel like they're as far in the court of public opinion in the in the you know ahead of the release of that game they're like teetering on the edge of could go either way, good or bad. Yeah. Uh, it played fine at E3. I played both the single player demo that they had 
and a behind closed doors co two player co op demo. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. It felt like Crackdown One, which is good. Uh, it also looked a little too much like Crackdown One, mm -hmm. uh, which in you know 2017 and now 2018. Not the best thing. So you know, we, and we haven't seen the you know the whole big Azure cloud powered destruction in the multiplayer since Gamescom of 2015. I think it was. It was a little so. bit worrisome. So yeah. you know, and I think there's been some development changes with that. Like I believe Sumo Digital is now doing the a lot of the heavy lifting on it, whereas before it was Cloud Gin with with David Jones, the who who was on the. Uh, the first game, so uh, it, yeah, it's it seems like it's been a bit messy, but you know, you, who really knows? Um, I yeah, I hope it turns out well because Crackdown is it's fun. I mean, you know, we don't talk about Crackdown too, but <laughs> Crackdown was a fun game, and would uh, there there is a place for Crackdown in yeah. in game in the video game world of 2018? Also, we just we just need some of those big first party yeah uh, Microsoft games. Yes, indeed to come along. Uh, there's a PS4 exclusive Days Gone that we're still waiting on a release date for. Do you feel like it's a 2018 game? It does yeah, to me. For sure. Yeah, probably. I think they gotta get that game out before Last of Us 2. Probably. It's shown, it's been shown, uh, I think, what, two major Sony events? It was E3 last year, and I believe, it mod was it PSX prior to that? So yeah, it was it's pushing definitely. It very, well, it was E3 was its debut, I thought. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah I feel like it's been at least Or the other way around. Yeah, yeah, either. I know but, I've yeah. seen two very different demos of that game. Yes. Yeah. It's it's uh shtick. I mean that's too mean. It's uh it's the thing that sets it apart is just the mass of zombies. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's the one where it's just uh, hundreds and hundreds. Excuse of zombies. me, I believe they're uh freakers or yeah. something. Oh, oh, <laughs> Justin. Oh, Come on, I, man. Uh, <laughs> uh well Justin, you mentioned Last of Us Part Two. Yeah. Is that a twenty eighteen game? Oh, no, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think I mean Sony doesn't need it this year with God of War, uh Spider Man, I, also Days Gone. I, Detroit Become Human. I, I could, Very I, could see, I could see Last of Us being like early 2019 and just Agreed like that. dominating that that period. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Agreed. Uh, God of War is promised to come this year from Sony. And they, actually, I think it's supposed to come the first half. They yeah, they had said early 2018, which you know unofficially you'd think would mean sometime in the first quarter, but. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I expected, I mean, just based off kind of nothing, just my gut. I thought it would be Spider-Man, then God of War in the fall, but Sony went the other direction. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, I think I think Spider-Man will be their biggest game of this year, so that can be their fall game. Although Sony hasn't even had a fall game the past couple That's years. true. Uh, and then I think Detroit Become Human is pretty much ready to go. I think that, I, yeah, I wouldn't expect uh, to be waiting too long for that game. But when is when is Infinity War out? It seems like they'd want uh, Spider-Man. May, right? Yeah, it seems, it seems like they'd want Spider-Man as close to that as possible. Mm. Yeah, except they don't really time video games around movie releases so much anymore. Well, yeah, they, they don't, don't but, but they but should. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. I mean, that's you sure. got you to ride that marketing wave. Well, but maybe they don't want to, I mean, it's he's got his own suit, it's a different Spider-Man, you know, maybe they don't really want to invite that comparison they, to They want They want to sell that game. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dreams should finally be out this year sometime. Uh, that's the PS4 exclusive. I'm so happy to, feel, to hear. I mean, I've said on the show, I've sort of made fun of it on GameScoop before. I'm like, I thought the demo looked nightmarish, and I, I just, I wasn't a believer in Dreams at all. And then everyone came back from PSX, yeah. completely mind blown. You know, Alana and Marty and everyone else, people whose opinion I trust and respect, said, "No, this is amazing. Like, we can't believe the tech on display here." So. You know, good for them. And if that turns out to be amazing, I will be first in line to check it out and say I was wrong. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit before uh, about Dragon Quest Builders coming to Switch. Dragon, Dragon Quest Builders 2 should be out sometime this year, uh, along with Faye, finally, from EA. That was an EA... Uh, original. An EA original from two E3s ago, three E3s ago. That's a little Fox, the music Fox, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, action platformer where you play as a fox. This one's so crazy. Fear Effect Reinvented is supposed to be out this year. Fear Effect 1 and 2 were PlayStation... Well, PlayStation, the first one was at least a PlayStation 1 game. The second one was either PS1 or PS2. Very early third-person action RPGs. That's a deep cut. Yeah, it's. I, I don't know what the audience is for... Fear effect reinvented. It's you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I, I'm aware of the original games, uh, and I, I didn't even play them. Final Fantasy 15 should come to PC this year. I'm waiting. Are you excited, it. Dan? <clears throat> Desperately. Okay. Uh, what? I guess Fortnite. I was, this is news to me. Fortnite isn't even out yet. It's like in early access. It's still in early access. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And it, it's so it, confusing it got, now. Uh, I mean, it won people over the yeah. quality of the gameplay, and it's a spin on Battle Royale. Uh, it, it was another game like Metal Gear Survive that people kind of wanted to hate because 
it's early access. They were, they were selling boxed copies in stores. And then gamers finally reached their limits and said, nope, that's too much for us. Um, but now it's a d massive success story yeah. for Epic. And, that's a big um, There's like hundreds of thousands of players in that game, yeah. I think. But, yeah. Well, on, on the free-to-play side of it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's, the, that's the, uh, you know, the Battle Royale style part of it. The, the core Fortnite thing is, is a little bit more divisive. And that's, that's still, you still have to pay to get into that one. Uh, I don't think it's ever actually going to be free to play. Uh, Brandon Tyrell did a did an early access review on it, and he liked it for a while, and then really kind of fell off on on the progression of it, which is really convoluted. And but you know he did have a lot of fun, you know, early on. I mean, it's such a wild. There is such an interesting story about the development of that game that I hope we eventually get to hear is sort of the uh, <laughs> the unfiltered version of it. Um, because Mark Rain can come in here anytime yeah. he wants. I mean, I played that game at E3 many, many years ago, and it looked and felt completely different yeah. than the product that we got yeah, now. Sure. And it was pretty uh, Minecrafty early on. Very it's, Minecrafty. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not so pivoted funny. at some point. Yeah, sure. but you can still feel that like vein of building in it. It just it's really fascinating to me, and I'm. And I thought for sure, like I, I rolled my eyes when they said Battle Royale mode coming to Fortnite, and I'm like, I, it's it felt desperate, and now lo and behold, it's crazy fun. Every, you know, the whole internet's addicted to it. So, um, you know, well done. I've got a meaty list of games that are expected this year. I'm just going to run through them. Uh, feel free to chime in if you guys have a comment to make. But okay. in the interest of time, let me let me try to quick fire these. Sure. Jurassic World Evolution, a Jurassic Park sim game that was announced last summer, I believe. Kentucky, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, coming to Switch, PS4, and Xbox One. I haven't played the original, but I hear really good things, especially from former GameScoop member Jared Petty. Uh, well, let me ask you guys about this. Will Kingdom Hearts 3 be out this Goodness year. Goodness gracious, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke at this point. It's like that game's never coming out. Yep, I want it now. I want it to come out just for uh, Jonathan's sanity. I mean, yeah. Jonathan Dornbush's yeah. sanity. He deserves it. He does. He deserves Kingdom Hearts 3. A uh, new Kirby game coming to Switch, Kirby Star Allies. Mm -hmm. Left Alive will be out on PC, PS4, announced by Square Enix last summer, uh, set in the Front Mission universe. Mega Man 11 should be out sometime this year from Capcom. Metro Exodus, uh, I think that was revealed last summer at E3. Yeah, and Xbox's then, E3 stage, and then it was just at the the, 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 the trailer. Game, well, a lot of us were a little iffy on the, yeah. the trailer from but like Its from second game showing Lord. was not quite as impressive as its first one. Uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, oh, sequel so to Ori and the Blind Forest. Uh, that's, is that a Microsoft published game? Yeah, that's an exclusive. Yeah. Pillars of Eternity 2. Very excited. Uh, big, big PC RPG. Obsidian. Project Octopath Traveler. I Switch. love the demo. That's cool. That's so much. It has an yeah. awesome, awesome art style to it. <laughs> Quake Champions will finally be out on PC. And it, that's another one that's in early access now. Yeah, but, yeah. but it like, should get its full release. Uh, <laughs> Shinmu 3. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, yeah. no way! There's, but there's too many of these games now that we've been talking about for years that are still not even coming out this year. It's ridiculous. Well, but the to be fair, tradition. to be fair, when that one was announced, it literally <laughs> was a logo, was a logo, yeah. you know, and a Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they announced Kickstarter. Uh, Skull and Bones. I hope that one makes it out this year. That's from that's, Ubisoft. That's a Ubisoft. Announced last game, summer. Yeah. Multiplayer, multiplayer pirate game. Pirate game. Uh, State of Decay Two. Yes. On Xbox, it's, it's time Four for that. Four player co-op. Yeah. Been so many years since the original. Really looking forward State to that. Decay. Love the original. Yeah, that's probably my most anticipated game from Microsoft. Yeah, oh, wow, that's interesting. Uh, Soul Calibur VI was just recently announced, yes. and uh, that should be out this year. Super Meat Boy Forever, Endless Runner version of Super Meat Boy. Yeah, Hard to get too excited about that, but The Crew 2 was recently uh, it was supposed to be out this spring, recently delayed, but I think should still make it out sometime this year because we've played a lot of that game already. Uh, the Walking Dead's final season. Coming sometime this year, and season two of The Wolf Among Us no. finally coming. Uh, hell no! I think that was, I think that no. was, was that canceled? Not yet. No. Not officially. We, we just think it will be. It's on. Oh the wow! I haven't been keeping up with this, but you're right. Uh, it was announced before the layoffs at Telltale. Yeah, unfortunately. Oh, wow, that's such that's such terrible news. Yep. Like that's the one that people have been waiting for a sequel to that first season for so long. Oh, that's terrible. Now I'm depressed. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove. That's still not out. No, it's still not out. Now Ryan's oh, depressed. I think yeah, another Kickstarter game. It uh, was I, that was. I didn't back it, but yeah, I've been following it. Uh, Toe Jam and Earl, uh, of course, a big uh, franchise on the Sega Genesis back in the day, and uh, I think published or uh, brought to the original Xbox. I think there was a Toe Jam and Earl game. Toe Jam and Earl Three, yeah, was, yeah for uh, original Xbox. Oh, yes, wow. it was. It was Crazy, so so. Right? I know. It was yeah. so so. Yeah. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. It's coming to Switch. I don't know. Is that a, a, a full sequel to No More Heroes? I think it's a new thing. Yeah. New thing. I think okay. It's a. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah. 
Tropico Six. There's another Tropico, guys. I did know that. You're still a dictator. There's still uh, a dictatorship to run. War Groove should be out on Switch, PC, and Xbox One, and that's the not Advance Wars. Yeah. There's a couple um, of what's the other one is tiny, tiny metal, me, tiny but that metal. one's out now and people are actually kind of so-so on it. So. Yeah, yeah, Wargro- that's another one where the AI is just not good. Yeah, Wargroove is uh, t- to my eye, just looking at you know screenshots and videos, looks yeah. like it's a little bit more adheres to Advance Wars. Yeah. Like it does but seem like, like yeah. the yeah. and Tiny Metal is the one that put a little bit more unique spin on it. Wolfenstein 2 should come to Switch sometime this year. Right. Uh, the Doom port turned out pretty okay, so hopefully yeah. this one turns out okay. And finally, a new Yoshi game, an as yet untitled Yoshi game. That looked that was one of my favorite things from Nintendo. E3 last year. I, the art style looks fantastic. Yeah, uh, ready for that style of gameplay. I, I, think I hope it, has it makes it out. The this world year. spinning, yeah, functionality of kind yeah, of like really cool. We could t- turn the world around. Uh, so there you have it. Those are all the games that we uh, know of at this point yeah. for 2018. Uh, so that said, what are we most excited to play? I right already said State of Decay, so I'll stay, I'll stay by well, that. Well, you said that's your Microsoft game, but right, I don't know right. if that's your most excited for overall. Yeah, I mean, Far, Far Cry is up there. Yeah, uh, Far Cry is like, up there for me. Like, I, I haven't, I don't think I've finished any either of the past two Far Cries. Or I guess three if you count Primal, but I've enjoyed playing them. Yeah, there was a. I'll give time. you, I'll give you two that you actually didn't mention. Oh my god, on your list, uh, Moss, which is a PlayStation VR game, again from some ex Bungie yeah. people in Seattle. Is that the uh, the mouse one? Yes, okay. PlayStation VR game you play as uh, Quill, who's a, a a cool little mouse, and it's. It's third person, so you are human sized uh, in the VR space. Yeah, yeah. And so it, you know you've got that scale going on, and it's uh, plays plays with the regular Dual Shock, not the the moves. Feels really the demo is great at E3. It was one of my favorite things from E3. Just pl- real pleasant surprise. Can't wait to see more. that's out next month. It's out in oh, uh, that, February. That does have a release date. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I missed that one. Yeah, uh, and then my other, uh, and then I'll just mention it's. There's a little bit of debate about this among the <laughs> Unlocked crew. I think it's. Pretty inevitable because it's every three years typically. So, uh, Halo Six. Mm, you think it'll be out this year? Yes. Wow. Uh, I think it'll, we'll get the announcement and then you know E3 announce and then go in the fall. There is they've got to redeem the campaign, the story. Uh, the story's a mess right now, but you know I'm I'm want to see where they go and what they do. Uh, multiplayer's rock solid. So yeah. so good. So I'm just very I'm just. Very curious. Curious is probably the best word I have for Halo Six, but that's that's the that's a big one. Yeah, I mean, we like Halo 5's multiplayer was so excellent. I mean, still is. It's sort of like yeah. we were saying with Kingdom Come Deliverance. They had, well, wait, what are you going to do about like you know the esports heavy you know more arena mode? And they just had all the right answers. You know, to 60 FPS and you know the big more casual. What's the war? The big uh, uh, the name of the mode where oh war zone. Yeah, the big war zone firefight. Um, it sort of had something for everybody, and that got so overshadowed by the campaign being so. Mediocre might even be putting it it's kindly. Been, uh, yeah, um, that's, that's generous. And uh, and it's just such a shame that the multiplayer didn't get you know. I, mean, more I think attention. it has. I mean, it's it's. I mean, it's in Game Pass. It's uh, you know they've added they've. They, I really feel like Halo Five has doesn't get enough credit for in, in this like you know anti loot box, anti microtransaction <laughs> world. You know, which justifiably so. A lot of publishers have been super gross about it. Microsoft and three four three have been. Continually putting out free, all free content for Halo Five maps, modes, all kinds of stuff. They've done a great job of supporting Halo Five on the multiplayer side. I'm actually gonna do so a do over for my most. Oh no, do over! <laughs> I, I I just didn't have the full list in my head at the moment when you asked that qu- question. I'm gonna go with uh, I, RDR Two is is probably my Red Dead Redemption Two. Yep. Uh, I've, I I never played the first one because it never came out on PC. Oh um, wow! But uh, but I'm lo- I'm looking forward to seeing what all the fuss is about. So you will you will dirty your hands with a console <laughs> gamepad to play this I, game? I have been known to. <laughs> um, and uh, and after that, Spider Man. Yeah, Spider Man looks really fun too. Uh, another PS4 exclusive I'm really excited for is God of War. Uh, that game looks awesome, and I haven't even really been super excited about the God of War series up until now. But there seems to be really do- doing something really different with this one. Yeah, there's some really cool giant monsters, and I love giant monsters, which is also why I'm excited for Monster Hunter World. Mm-hmm. I think that game looks really cool. Yeah, I think Pillars of Eternity is way way up there for me. Really, really like the original, and I've been following the the their. Uh, it's a Kickstarter game, so they're being very open and transparent about yeah. the development of the sequel and. Uh, all the 40-some multi-classes that they have in the game and uh, the advancements to... It's striking a really interesting balance because it's still that viewpoint, that isometric view, uh, but they're modernizing it in a lot of ways with lighting effects and shadows and you know dynamic 
uh, weather and things like that. And it, it's striking a nice balance between the old school and the modern. Mm. Um, and that that and Spider Man, you know, yeah. Insomniac hit such a home run with Sunset Overdrive, and it, and it, it it's like the dream game where everyone's like, man, if only they were making a Spider Man game, and then it came true. Like it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, sea of Thieves is the one that I'm yeah, like, cool probably too. just most excited about. Like, please, for the love of God, be as <laughs> be as live up to your potential. Yeah. And in short bursts, it has. Oh, I want it to be. I really want it to be good. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Honorable mention to Mega Man Eleven, mm. uh, which I also should mention that the first two Legacy collections are coming to Switch sometime this year. They also announced uh, a Mega Man X collection, which hopefully will be out this year as well. Collection. Yeah, there you go. I'm glad I didn't have to do it this time. <laughs> that was for you, Dan. We're being. We're we're we're, we're finally learning. Three dads on the panel. Yeah, <laughs> just want to point that out. <laughs> my, my dad three, joke. My three dads. Aww. <laughs> Let's check in with the listeners. Uh, we just try to get through, a, and we're running long on time here. Run through a couple of emails here. This is Owen from Chengdu, China. We don't get a lot of listeners from China. No. Oh. And he says, I recently just moved to Melbourne with my parents at the age of 16, and I lived 16 years without even touching any video game. Wow. Back in China, there's no video game shop. I never see any video game commercials. Nobody even talks about video games, especially console games because of the console ban. Most of my friends don't even know The Legend of Zelda. The only game I heard people talk about is League of Legends, and the only way to play it is to go to an internet cafe. A few weeks ago, my parents bought a PS4 Uncharted 4 bundle, thinking it's some sort of setup box that comes with a DVD. I played it, and as you can imagine, for someone like me, it was a mind-blowing experience. I never knew video games can have such amazing visuals and stories that even some movies can't compete with. That game opened the gate to a whole new world that I never thought existed. I've been searching about video games 24-7 for the past two weeks. Then I discovered your show, and I've been listening to it nonstop. I think I went through 60 episodes in two weeks. Goodness gracious. You guys know a lot about video games, and that really helped me understand this new world. A few weeks back, I didn't know what JRPG and Hack and Slash meant. Now I can confidently join my Australian friends' conversations about video games. Right now I'm convincing my parents to buy more games, but they're still upset about accidentally buying a PS4, and they think games are just meaningless. I can't blame them because the only games they know are games like PUBG, League of Legends, and Overwatch. Not a lot of people play console games in China. They don't really have any great meaning behind it, so they'd tell me just to read books or watch movies because they, te they teach me more about life and stuff. I know games like League of Legends are really fun, but they fit perfectly into my parents' stereotype about games. So my question is, for someone like my parents, what kind of game do you think can show them just how much video games can teach you? Like games with amazing stories that will make them tear up and never say no to me buying games ever again. Thank you and Happy New Year. That, that Bioshock collection, I think, is a good, a good go-to yeah, well, that's a good, good uh, can we get him an NES classic? Well, I know, yeah, or that's, an SNES classic. Yeah, yeah. like that missed out on. There's a lot to catch up on. I, yeah, I, it's, I can't even. I'm so mind blown. Like, can you just imagine being plunked into 2017? How like, could he even play Uncharted Four? An entire new entertainment medium. Yeah, your first game ever is Uncharted Four. I don't even. Does even, it teach you controls? You've never listened know. to music before. Here <laughs> you go. Here's what music. Here's is. Here's Rammstein. This is what music is. <laughs> Uh, it's a crazy story. So if he has a PS4, I don't know. It's hard to come up with games that teach you about life. I mean, in terms of uh, in terms of just sort of showing off the medium of video games to normies like his mom and dad. Yep. Uh, Blue pills. I, yeah, I actually well, uh, I actually think Uncharted Four is a really good just because yeah. that's such a direct analog to like big, high budget, yeah, movies, action oriented sure. films that. Uh, you know, even if it's not the most, like, it's not teaching you life lessons. Like, it's still like, oh, I get it. You know, it's like you can play this summer blockbuster. Yeah. I got one for I I, yeah, I yeah. think, how about the Walking Dead season one I was going to suggest this scenario. That. I think it's, the Walking it's Dead uh, season one. fully is approachable, good. and that's the closest a video game has ever gotten to make me cry yeah. uh, at the end. So, yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, but you, you mentioned Bioshock Collection. I think that's probably a good one. There's some smart storytelling happening in that one. Yep. I think of course, at a glance, they might also just see a lot of bloody murder and killing. Which right. So I, was, I was about to say, if we want to get away from the from <laughs> he, the shooting and stabbing. Which one? He's 16. Yeah, I'm, just, yeah, I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Right, but his parents uh, might might frown <laughs> upon. If they upon have the stereotype about video games, right. that might I, fit. Uh, yeah, I'm saying because it's M-rated, that's all. Yeah. yeah. yeah oh, that's true. That is true. And in Australia, well, Australia does not look kindly on. That's true. Uh, in terms of games that just at a glance uh, seem to be doing more than you know mindless violence, I think The Witness mm. is yeah. a good one. Uh, it's a really smart puzzle game. I Inside, that's, I think that's a great, a, a, like great recommendation. Actually, yeah. uh, and then also recently releases the uh, is Okami HD, 
which is just a beautiful game, which, as I said recently, I, I dare say might teach you a thing or two about Japanese culture. Maybe not about modern uh, life in Australia, but... Won't teach you anything, uh, except that video games are super fun, but Forza Horizon 3, you're down well, in I Australia, mean, well, like, check this except, out, this is incredible. Except he's got a PS4. Oh, right. Hard okay. to play uh, Forza uh, on foiled a PS4. again. Maybe Hellblade? Hellblade, yeah. Senua's Sacrifice. Yeah. Released last it's year. It's sort of hard. It feels like some games are more gamers games. Like I would maybe The Witness is maybe my favorite game of this generation. Like I absolutely am obsessed mm. with it. But I don't know that I'd obsess. I'd recommend it to someone. It's that, on iOS though. Like it's yeah. It's yeah. Not. Uh, I, I would mm -hmm. say it's maybe just out there for anybody to check out. That's true. Uh, I think uh, this is a fascinating story, Owen. Do keep us informed on your gaming education and let us know what you pick and if your parents. Open up a little bit. Hey, to it. Netflix should film that for a documentary. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, that's I would watch that. I would too. Uh, this is Robert Rogers. He has a good alliteration going on in his name, and he says he has. A, this is our uh, our bizarro question of the week. If you didn't already own a Switch, would you buy a one thousand dollar Switch console if it came with all Virtual Console games up to the N sixty four? So. To clarify first, if he says up to the N64, that doesn't include the N64, or does it? Or that, does that? It? That is what that literally means. He probably means it includes the N64. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's say let's give him the benefit of the doubt, because it's a thousand dollars. It's a Switch, and it has all NES, uh, Sega Super. Genesis, Super NES, Turbo Graphics 16. Mm. Wait, it's not just Nintendo products. Well, they were on the Virtual Console. So. Oh, okay. So is it all the ones released on Virtual Console or just all of them? I mean, I would have to assume just the ones that have been released on Virtual Console. I, I would say absolutely not because you can get access to a lot of those games for a lot less than that. That's true. That's yeah, a $700 premium yeah. for it's true. I think, to play a lot of old games. I think dollar for dollar, like I don't know how many Virtual Console games there are, but hundreds. Like it's probably a good deal in terms of if you were to add it all up, except that, you know, I have an SNES Classic that already gives me you know, the 20 most beloved Super Nintendo games for me, you know, yeah. that's a couple. Um, and same with the NES Classic and, and other games that I have on, uh, you know, like I have Link to the Past on my 3DS already. Like, I don't need, I don't need, like, yeah, you're probably getting more than $1,000 worth of games, but it's $900 worth of games that I I don't particularly care to own or need. Yeah. So I would pass for That's true. Yeah, I'd probably have to pass too. To pass uh, for me. I'd be more interested if it if included all the eShop games. Ooh. That'd be a little, a little bit more tantalizing to me. Sorry, Rob, Rob, we're out. <laughs> Rob Raj. Oh, okay. Rob Raj. Uh, I think that's what his friends call him. R squared. <laughs> Ra Ra. That's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> okay. It is January, which means it's time to take a trip over to the Retro Magazine catalog. Oh, it's well, cold out here, Damon. It's January. <laughs> I don't know why we keep the retro magazine catalog in the outside, <laughs> but there's just no room in the IGN office. Oh, I've just pulled out the January 1992 issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly with Star Trek uh, on the cover. Star Trek VI. Which one was this one? The Undiscovered, the Undiscovered, Undiscovered, Undiscovered Country. Country is the cover story, oh, which is a fabulous cover here on Electronic Gaming Monthly. The country is a metaphor for peace. Yeah. Secretly one of the better Star Trek movies. Secretly? Is that a secret? That's not a secret. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, let's check in on, with the letter from the editor, Steve Harris, who writes, uh, the only constant is change. This is strap line. In January 1992, he says, this adage rings particularly true in the video game industry where new technology and changing play themes dictate the difference between yesterday's has-beens and tomorrow's marvels. We've been witness to some incredible changes in the last 12 months. Nintendo finally got around, finally got around to releasing their 16-bit Super NES. Sega scored big with Sonic the Hedgehog. And NEC got next-generation gameplay in an affordable package. That's TurboGrafx-16. These events don't even begin to touch on the countless number of video game carts that have appeared for all the above systems, as well as the 8-bit Nintendo and the family of portable machines now on the market. 1991 was indeed a staggering year in the world of electronic gaming. Amazingly, as we gaze ahead to see what 1992 and 93 have in store for gaming enthusiasts like you and me, the future just seems to get brighter. Supercharged CD-ROMs from NEC and Sega, compatible with existing game hardware as well as new formats from Sony and Philips that take advantage of CDI configurations, <laughs> promise limitless possibilities in interactive video discs. You can bet that cartridge-based systems will still get some heavy use, and we may even see some additional cart-only platforms like the Jaguar from Atari within the next 12 months. 
It's amazing that uh, I think we don't need to do. Here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we'll just swap out the console names and the game names, <laughs> and then we don't need to do this job anymore. Yep, it's true. It does Things they are a changing. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, <laughs> fill-in year sure was incredible. It was a staggering year for video game enthusiasts like you and me. Uh, in the letters to the editor, we have a letter from David Bolig in Salt Lake City, Utah, who says, I have watched the Genesis games go from 4 to 8 and now to 12 megabits with Shut accolades it. Star Control. <laughs> I have a Super <laughs> NES and all I see are 4 and 8 megabit games. Is Nintendo falling behind on the Meg race? Or is it that the Super NES, with its slow processor, just unable to handle the extra memory? Also, when will we see new controllers with auto-fire built in? They would sure help me get through some of the new shooters. you got to remember, there was no email back then. So the, 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 these four, whoever, whichever editor was tasked with putting together the letters section, uh, which I had to do back at OXM, <laughs> me too. You, you, they had to result re, uh, rely on actual mail. Yep. So, uh, boy, I... I, I that, that one, I can f- sort of a unique perspective on that. Those were the days when people had to really want to talk to you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't, wasn't just email you. I hate well, you. then you'd have to wait months for a response. Because yeah. yep. it would be like two issues from then. Oh, yep. good. Well, here you go, Eric. <laughs> uh, the editor says, hang in there, Dave. Remember, it took the Genesis programmers two years to get to 12 megabit. The SNES programmers have been going at it for a much shorter time. There is good news, though. Enix of Japan. Makers of the legendary Dragon Quest series, Dragon Warrior in the U.S., have announced that the fifth in the series will be on the SNES and that it will be 12 megabits. Enix of America hasn't announced if they will do a U.S. version yet. Spoilers, they will not. (laughs) It is just a matter of time before we start to see more controllers here in the U.S. While there are a few in Japan now, companies are waiting until there are enough SNES systems in the homes to make it worthwhile to bring out a new controller. Hmm. I think some of the JRPGs for the SNES got out to like 30... 40 megabits, even some of them, but they are probably games that might not have even been released here. Uh, let's see. We have a letter here. Super Gun. This is from Paul Goff in Toronto, Ontario. He says, I was at my favorite video game store when something caught my eye. On the counter, there was a new Japanese system that boasted you can play actual arcade games in your own home. What? And they had Street Fighter II set up. There's only one problem with this system, and that is it costs $1,149. It said it was a 32-bit system. I was wondering if you could tell me more about this great system. EGM says, we've known about this system for some time, but waited till we knew more about it. One of the popular names for this system is Super Gun. (laughs) Made in Taiwan, this system is basically an interface to an arcade game motherboard. What you get for your money is a black box, a controller, and a cable to connect the box to the arcade board. The reason the system costs so much is the fact that you are buying the arcade motherboard. Street Fighter 2 is not cheap. That alone costs over $1,000. From our experience, you certainly get the ultimate in game playing as you have the coin op minus the cabinet and monitor. We, however, are very reluctant to endorse this product. It has come to our attention that some companies are selling illegal counterfeit rip-off Street Fighter II motherboards as part of the Super Gun package. For anybody who is thinking about buying the system, it is very easy to check if you are getting the real arcade board. The name Capcom is all over the chips and board. If the chips are unnamed, odds are the company is selling the rip-off board. Penalties are very severe for people dealing in counterfeit boards and for those who buy the product. As such, we can't endorse the Super Gun. It isn't a 32-bit game system either. Mm. I never heard of the Super Gun back in the day. I don't think so. I didn't have $1,000 to throw around. <laughs> but, well, but I guess it's just like you could buy different arcade motherboards and just interchange them and hook it up to your TV. It's kind of, I mean, it's, in, it's an interesting... I've never heard of that. Yeah, for for $1,000, just buy the, buy the cabinet. Well, yeah, and yeah, that's true. Uh, not a lot of high-profile reviews in this uh, issue. They did review John Madden 92. That is their editor's choice, Platinum, Ooh, Game of Platinum. the Month. Got four nines, and man, they, they were just crazy about uh, Madden back then. Is that review literally one sentence? Uh, the shortest one says, EA no sports. The first Madden was perfect, and this version improves on it. There's nothing better on the market for any format. Nuff said. That's a tweet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, of Just, course, that's only how one. How much of did four. you play it? Yeah. Also, this is this is why I, I try and like prevent our reviewers from <laughs> using the word perfect anywhere. In it's there. perfect. It's like no, no, it's not. They're they're gonna make something better in a few years. <clears throat> Uh, in their international preview section, they preview a Nintendo game called Yoshi's Eggs. Yoshi's Eggs. Who can remember that? Who, who <laughs> could forget the classic? I think this game ended up just being called Yoshi. Or Yoshi's Cookie? 
No, it's not Yoshi's Cookie. Oh, it's the one but that this came is, out as just Yoshi. It's just called Yoshi on the, the on the NES. Yeah, it's like the Tetris style puzzle game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but they previewed it here as Yoshi's Eggs, which is kind of interesting. And then there's a preview on page 64 of a game that uh, <laughs> Super Chinese World. Oh boy, is a, is a game. It's my favorite world. The Super Famicom, and this game uh, would end up coming. I think it has Super Kung Fu Brothers. It was like the the, the name that ended up being released with here in the West. Well, it was a simpler time. Yeah, but <laughs> Super Chinese World is probably not a game you would see released today. Page 93, something interesting here. Uh, <laughs> I'll put a nice scan of this ad up on uh, in the video. But look at this Game Boy peripheral. America's getting a new grip on Game Boy. Look at this gigantic, you know, I feel like I've seen a lot of crazy. It's like a shock case. I feel like I've seen a lot of crazy <laughs> Game Boy peripherals. I've never seen this one before. For our listeners, it's a giant black rubber shot, shot case that you wrap around your entire Game Boy system. Yeah, it's it called the Game Boy Bodyguard Sure Grip, Sure Grip Protective Cover. It reminds me of those gigantic grips that uh, kids get for uh, young children's like iPads. Yeah, but one of those Otter boxes. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you could drop that thing yeah. off of a cliff, and it would probably be fine. You could do that with a Game Boy, not in a case. On page 152 is a, a preview of Zelda 3, mm. A Link to the Past. I see. Uh, and there's also just, like, look at these tiny little screenshots that they're using to what promote. That, what's the yellow? Exactly. What is that? It's, it's like the opening cutscene in the game, but they're not, you can't tell anything from, uh. these, from these opening shots. Yeah, remember back in the magazine days, they would give you like three screenshots, and well, that's what that's you got to print. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I like, so this is interesting. On uh, page 160, they preview Contra 4 oh. for the Super Nintendo. Mm. And this is very clearly Contra 3. So I don't, I don't know. And Contra 4 wouldn't be released until the Nintendo DS <laughs> in 2000, whatever. So I don't know how they got their wires crossed here. It's a, what happened? It's a big, it's a big controversy. Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Love it. It was the controversy. Maybe January it's because there was Contra and then there was Super C and then did Contra Hardcore on the Genesis come out before this? So they, well, this must be the fourth. This is the fourth Contra. This I mean, must we've be been Contra looking 4. at these magazines for months now. And yeah. if there's one thing we've learned, it's that editors back then in the early 90s just did whatever they want. They just made up. <laughs> well, a lot made of this is like clearly not written by the actual editors. A lot of this is written by someone in Japan that's just passing them copy and they're printing it without even looking at it because here's a preview for Mega Man World 2 mm. on Game Boy so oh god uh, when they when the Mega Man Mega Man games came to Game Boy they're just Mega Man and Mega Man 2 and Mega Man 3 over here in Japan they were called Rockman World right. and then Rockman World 2 but why are they printing this as Mega Man World 2 <laughs> they're like combining the Japanese and the Western <laughs> names for no reason they made it up if this is the second game in the series, there's no way the editors of this magazine wouldn't know it was. it's not called Mega Man World 2 unless they were just not paying attention at all. No byline on there either. You know, who knows? Yeah, let, uh, let the record state this is the most angry Damon has ever been. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> telling you, I've, when revisiting this magazine, I'm starting to realize that the back half of these EGMs from this time are not, they're written by someone in Japan yeah. who just is just passed along and then it just gets printed. And finally, on page 230... Once again, I just want to point out, here's a preview for Mega Man 4 <laughs> for the NES, but this is 1992. They're previewing Mega Man 4 uh, for an old, you know, last-gen console of the time, and there would still be two more Mega Man games that would come out after this yep. for the NES. It's crazy. I always used to really love the, uh, they would stitch together all the screenshots to show, like, the spiraling, branching I mean, level path. I have it right here. It makes me very nostalgic. But taking screenshots back then was was a nightmare. Yep. Yes. You had to uh, actually photograph the screen in a lot of cases. And I actually actually learned from reading a book about Super Mario Bros. three recently that there was a, a Japanese company that specialized in taking those long uh, level like map or photo layouts layouts of maps for video games. There was like one company in Japan that everybody used to huh. do it, and they used it for Nintendo Power as well. Awesome scoop. We we just call that Brendan Graber. We call that a scoop gym. And that, ladies and gentlemen, Who's camp? brings us to video game 20 questions. Mm -hmm. Our well, let's make it quick. I'm starving. Okay. <laughs> still have any <laughs> lunch. Oh, I'm sorry. I took no, your, it's uh, fine. Lunch time. Our yeah. suggestion this week comes from Andrew Brown from Rhode Island. Be nice to, be nice to Ryan, Andrew. Let Don't make this hard. <laughs> the questioning begin. Uh, okay. Uh, does your character wear a hat? 
That is completely unclear. <laughs> I don't, you don't put your thumb up. That yeah. doesn't count. Yeah, no, that's the answer. There's no way to answer that one. It's a completely unclear if you were a hat. Was right. this game made after the year 2000? Mm, no. Okay. Was it made after the year 1995? Yes. All right. Okay. We have our window. Okay. Is this a, uh, did this game appear on the PlayStation 1? No. All right. So either PC and 64, Sega. Or late, late NES, Dreamcast. No, because that was 2000. No. Yeah. Oh, this is 99, so maybe, but probably not. Um, is it a platform exclusive? Yes. All right, is it an N64 game? No. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right. So in between 95 and 2000, mm -hmm. not PlayStation, Nintendo, so what, OG, Xbox? Or PC. Or, well. Is it a PC game? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, now, so we can handle this. We can, we've got, <laughs> we uh, can do this. All right, is, is it a, uh, right, we should do, try and narrow down the genre. Well, it, was it developed in America? Yes. Um, and it's not clear if your character wears a hat, which means it's not a. It could be a first-person game. Be. It could be. Uh, it, it could be a. Uh, you might not even be a character. Right. So it could. It could be like an RTS. Um, is it? Is it a first-person game? Uh, well, now. You uh, can you be a little more specific? <laughs> well, I I bet you anything. It's a strategy game. Oh, okay. Let's 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 do it. Is, <laughs> is it is it a strategy game? Yes. Woo! Okay. So, uh, all right. So that, and that that window gives us Warcraft, Starcraft, yeah. some Command and Conquer stuff. Um, and there's there's like Star Wars Force Commander. I think is this oh, game made by Blizzard. Like, I think. No. Okay. That's ten. Is this game made by Westwood. No. Oh. Okay. Oh boy. So no. No Blizzard. No Westwood. But it is a strategy game. Um, is it a is it a Age of Empires? The real time return. Yeah, I, um, yeah, that would that'd be well. Let's see. It was ensemble was, back then. Still, no, yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, it was is ensemble. Ensemble from start to finish for that, that. Yeah. Or except for now, it's being done by Relic. Um, okay, is it is it? Um, I guess we we okay. So is it made by Ensemble? Yes. Okay. Oh. Boy. <laughs> is it the first in a series? Yes. All right. Age of Empires. It is Age of Empires, yes. Oh. Nicely done. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1997, I believe that one. Nice. Developed by Ensemble, published by Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Single and multiplayer. Moe's in that one. Yeah. Yep. As was but I was worried you were going to ask if it was, well, yeah. I was worried, because I think, I feel like it's come to other platforms after that. Not the first one. The, the original Age of Empires two, never went anywhere else. Well, I'm pretty maybe. sure it did not. I mean, I'd, I, I'd be yeah. surprised if it did. But two is the one that's gotten around. Okay. Got remade. Did, and yeah. did two make it onto consoles? Maybe no. not console, but I'm just saying. No. Like, I, it makes me so happy that Age of Empires is one of those franchises that you know is getting more. They just released the new expansion for three, two, two three, and three was kind of a bomb that also destroyed mm. uh, a bomb that exploded and destroyed ensemble. Oh, dang. <laughs> Yeah, that's too bad. Did they remake the first one? Is that, did that they, happen they recently? Did, or? I no think one they, knows. they did an HD version of 2. I think the, the first one is... Two. The yeah. 2 is generally considered to be vastly inferior to 1. Nobody cares about 1. It's two like Warcraft the, 2. Yeah. Warcraft 1's bad. Yeah, kind yeah. of is. Uh, well, thank you for the suggestion. Andrew Brown, remember if you have your own suggestions, send them to gamescoop at IGN.com. That is all the scoops we have for you this week. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Dan. Mm -hmm. My name is Damon. This is IGN Gamescoop, and we're out.